Hi there listeners, this is your homeboy Brian and welcome to How to Be Brian the Podcast. This is the reflections and musings of a young adult on a pursuit to educate and live purposefully. If you're listening to the show for the very first time, then please do not forget to subscribe. But if you are an old subscriber or follower, then welcome. We meet again. For today's episode, I will be talking about something which is very personal to me. I also choose to live by this principle and I have supported this small online movement since the moment it started. So disclaimer to all of you who are listening, I am not a mental health expert nor a graduate of any psychology related degree but I have experienced and have gone through mental health issues which gave me the courage and confidence to speak about this topic. If anything, I am more of a mental health advocate. Now, our topic for today is prompted by a recent trending moment during the Binibining Pilipinas Coronation Night. I believe it was during the Q&A portion of the pageant wherein Tito Boy Abunda asked this question. And he asked, When is it okay not to be okay? And when is it not okay to not be okay? And right at that moment, when I checked Twitter, I saw that it was trending. And in the beginning, it was trending due to the fact that it was a tricky question. But the morning after, I already saw several people answering this question through social media. And I thought, it's such a good conversation piece. Maybe through this trending moment, we can start a substantial conversation about this topic. If you follow me on social media, then you might have seen my post about this. If you aren't familiar about the topic, then allow me to give you a few insights about it. I am not talking about the Korean drama, It's Okay Not To Be Okay, but rather the online movement about it. So I personally define it as a movement that humanizes people by revealing that not everyone is as perfect as they look like on social media. Because it's so easy for us to be tricked by what we see on social media, especially on Instagram. Everyone is posting about their achievements in life, the things that they have, their properties, and so on. And when you look at other people's Instagram, you see all of their highlights. And it's so easy for you to think that their life is perfect. It also allows us to be more compassionate and more sensitive to the struggles of the individuals even if we do not necessarily witness them face their problems. Again, this goes back to the very first episode where I mentioned that just because someone looks like they're fine doesn't mean they necessarily are. This movement also encourages people to feel what they are supposed to feel because feelings demand to be expressed and all feelings are valid. In simple words, it's okay not to be okay reminds us that it is okay to be sad, it is okay to be angry, it is okay to be disappointed. It is okay for us to feel the emotions that the society dictates for us not to feel. And to those of you who don't understand Tito Boy's question, it simply asks us, when is it okay that you're not fine? And when is it not okay that you are not fine? There are several responses to this question online, but this answer is the one that resonates most with me. This one is posted by Sunflower Psychologist on Facebook and it says, If I were to answer this question from a clinical psychologist standpoint, it is okay not to be okay if you are in a stressful situation. It is okay to not be okay if our negative feelings and emotions are congruent to the unfortunate and unpleasant situation we are in. It is okay to not be okay as long as we are fully aware of our feelings and how we understand them. On the same post, it was also said that it is not okay to not be okay, especially if a person can no longer function normally. 
So to sum up this answer, it is safe to say that it is okay not to be okay when the negative emotion that we are feeling is appropriate to the situation at hand. But there will come a time when we need to address our unpleasant feelings so that we can go on with life. That I think is the best way to answer this question. But allow me also to give you a brief background story as to how I approach this topic. So when I was younger, I used to think that it is normal for children to cry. So if you lost a toy or if you had a fight with your friend, then it is okay to cry. But it reached a point wherein grown-ups or adults would stop children from crying. I don't know if you have experienced this, but I have been in such situations. So growing up, I kind of equated crying or being emotional to being weak. Or I saw crying as a sign of weakness. So when I would go through several issues or I would encounter problems, I would refrain to express any emotion about it because it has been ingrained in me that if you are emotional about it or if you are too affected about it, then you are weak or you are the loser in that situation. I continued having that mindset until my teenage years. That was also the time when my friends went through love problems. And love, as they say, is a tricky thing. At that time, I also witnessed firsthand how love can induce all sorts of emotion on one person. And I saw it happen to my friends one by one. And it also happened to me. There was also even a time when several friends of mine would go through love problems at the same time. And I thought, oh, I guess this is the reality. I guess this is what it means like to grow up. Growing up opens up the doors and allows you to experience life and encounter different emotions. There were also several occasions when I realized that because it was ingrained in me that having emotions or being emotional is equated to being weak or having weakness in you, that I have also treated people negatively because they showed emotions to me. Back then, I understand that people go through things and that they are supposed to feel their emotions, but only to a certain extent. If it has been going on for several days or several weeks, I would often lose my patience. Or sometimes, I totally ignore people who are going through something as a means of protecting my inner peace. And after years and years of suppressing my emotions and ignoring them, sweeping them under the rug, it came to a point where I suffered a breakdown because of all the emotions that I was keeping to myself. And right at that moment when I experienced that backlash, it just occurred to me that being emotional is human nature. From believing that being emotional is a sign of weakness, I then believed that being emotional is a sign of being human. I dropped the ego built by the constant pressure to be okay and be fine, and I finally embraced my emotions. And embracing my own emotions allowed me to understand other people's emotions as well. It allowed me to empathize with people, to understand people, and to put myself in their shoes. And over time, believe it or not, what I initially thought was a sign of weakness became a way for me to empower the people around me. By expressing my emotions and being vulnerable, I was also able to empower the people around me to express their emotions also by building a safe space for them. A safe space where they can open up, a safe space where they can feel understood, and a safe space where they will not feel alone. And now that we have established that kind of conversation, I'd like to say that there is no right or wrong emotion. There is only a right or wrong reaction or way of expressing our emotion. But again, 
all feelings are valid. I know we live in an era where everyone is seemingly good and fine, but you don't have to feel the pressure to feel the same. Do not allow people to dictate what you are supposed to feel and not supposed to feel. Allow yourself to be at peace with all the emotions that you are feeling. I have said it repeatedly that all feelings are valid. But just because we are validating all emotions doesn't mean that we are allowed to express it in any way that we can. We should also be careful with who we express our emotions to and the ways by which we express our emotions. As much as we are allowed to feel our emotions, let us also express them in ways that do not harm other people. In some cases, you might want to keep your battles to yourself and fight them silently, but also have the wisdom to ask for help when it is necessary. Remind yourself that you have a close circle, a community who will rally behind you, who will support you, who will accept you and understand where your emotions are coming from. And if you feel like you haven't found that person or community yet, the community or the person who will support you and understand you, then you can be that person for yourself. It doesn't matter if the world invalidates your emotions, if the world invalidates what you are going through, and the world around you dictates that you should be okay. What matters is you do not invalidate your own emotions. You do not invalidate the things that you are going through. What matters is that you do not invalidate the feelings that you are supposed to feel as a part of being human. And to those who contradict this movement, to those who believe that we should always be fine, we should always be okay, and to those who believe that being emotional is unnecessary, I'm telling you that at some point, you will be in a situation wherein you will be feeling the emotions that you are invalidating on others. I am not forcing you to be emotional, but what I'm suggesting rather is for you to be welcoming to other people's emotions. Because there will come a time that you will also be going through certain things and you want to have a community of people or at least one person who will understand you. And the only way for you to be understood is for you to also be understanding towards other people. Allow me to end this episode by reminding you that all feelings are valid, feelings demand to be expressed, and that it is okay not to be okay. That's it for this episode of How to Be Brian the Podcast. If you liked it, then please do not forget to subscribe and follow me on my social media accounts. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Paalam!